what should we talk about? Future of fintech industry. All right. There is no future for fintech industry. That's, that's very true. All right. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> We're good. Uh, who here knows about Bitcoin? Show of hands? No? Anybody? Someone. Sweet. So we can skip that part. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Ethereum. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> um, so the future of fintech, I guess, should we seriously don't just jump into it? Yeah, yeah. All right, sounds good. Um, my personal opinion is uh, we're going to the world of tokenization right now, and it's happening around the globe. So essentially, anything from STOs to ICOs, the ICO market's definitely at this point is seeing its days. But uh, you know, with the regulations coming out in the United States, I think it might pick up again. I don't, I'm not sure if the, in the next wave Ethereum will hold the same power in the ICO market as it did. I think like a lot of the steam was kind of sucked out of it when the last market crash occurred in the ICO market. Um, and there's a lot of new contenders like EOS you know, coming out to supply that. And then likewise there's NEO and there's a bunch of other coins that are coming out to try to do similar, similar tasks and native blockchains like T Tezos and things like that. So, yeah, we'll see a little shift next time, but I think there's going to be another day for an ICO. It's not completely dead yet. Um, but I do think everything's going to get tokenized pretty quickly here. But what, the, what about the future of money? Future of money is a... Is it still Bitcoin efforts? I don't think so. I don't think so. No, definitely it's, not. Yeah. In my opinion, definitely not. But um, it's too slow. There's too many problems. Everything you actually said, I completely agree with you. Thank you very much. 100%, yeah. It's, um, it's definitely centralized beyond what the original design ever intended, in my opinion. Lightning solution for the network sort of addresses some issues, but it creates a bunch of new ones. So, <laughs> you know, so it's like you fix one problem by creating a bunch of new ones. I don't know if that's a good idea. Um, sooner or later, we're going to have to transition into better form of programmable money. But and let's try to actually create here at stage the ideal future money, what it might look like. The ideal future of money is a blockchain that learns from itself and writes its own code. Something that human cannot write because it shouldn't. It should be just created and ran by artificial intuition. It should be something that's robust, has its own receptacles, understand its own environment, uh, tailor itself to the needs of everybody who is on the network trying to do smart contracts, sends, receives. I mean, if we're really going to go future of money, let's go future of money, right? Like but AI. It's about technology, but the nature of payment, what, what should it be? Um, should it represent our working time, I mean, lifetime? Can we tokenize the life? Can we tokenize the resources? What should be air we are actually? I feel like they've already air. tokenized lives with Facebook. Like, <laughs> we just don't get cut of it. You know, um, they're just kind of like taking it away from us. But uh, yeah, everything can be tokenized. I mean, there's a project trying to tokenize air on Amazon right now, which I think is kind of funny, but <laughs> you know, they're trying. Uh, so at this point, what else is left? You know, oddly enough, there's, I've heard of a project that's trying to um, tokenize um, human organs, which is <laughs> kind of dark. That's weird. But, <laughs> yeah, but it's, nece it's a necessity, right? So it makes sense. I, I think actually we are get into the same technological wave as we did with the internet before. Actually, when internet started, if you remember, it was like a telnet gopher protocol. There was no such thing as HTTP, and uh, there is no such thing as browser, mm -hmm. and it was enormously weird to, to use it. It was like a text-based -based interface. It, the, the whole internet was like a 200 websites. But then it was the browser who was created, and then now we know the internet as, as it is. The mass adoption came from that. That's so good. probably yeah. we are now at the stage when the blockchain is a new internet, but the uh, browser has not yet been created. So probably someone should, guys, please, uh, invent this blockchain browser, which should be something as unique, I mean, yep. universal wallet. For sure. Yeah, the killer app hasn't happened yet, in yeah. my opinion. I don't, I we don't have it. it. No. But we should have it because it, it should be something which, which will allow you to exchange from any person to any company among the world any type of tokens, with more or less without commission, yeah. any type of that, let's call it money, yeah. automated with artificial intelligence, with all that stuff we, we know currently, I think we technically is possible to create this stuff, but someone should 
be very, very courage to create it. Yeah, I think the, the final result of money should be frictionless society in which anybody can spend whatever they have and the receiver should receive whatever they want. And it should happen seamlessly, automatically, without having to educate people or deal with anything. There needs to be a unifying, unifying system uh, that sort of enables all the coins to live in the same ecosystem. Because right now, you've got to have one wallet over there, one wallet over there. Uh, you know, people trust exchanges because it's just a convenience. Uh, it's just, you know, like Binance, so many people keep their coins. And they on. do not trust exchanges at the same time. Exactly. So it's just kind of ludicrous as that, right? Like, I mean, you kind of contradict yourself by doing it, but you have no choice because if you want to catch the market, you have to leave the order books there because you can't really participate and not participate at the same time. There's no other option, right? So people take that risk willingly and at the same time can't sleep at night, which is terrible. So we haven't really solved fundamental problems with crypto of decentralization at the very least. Like, that hasn't really occurred. Like, we had the first attempt of decentralization with Bitcoin, where the idea was, you know, miners mining with their CPUs, then it went into GPUs, and then, you know, it just kind of become a pyramid, and now there's like, you know, three mining pools, four mining pools that are Still time. centralized. Yeah, exactly. Now it's just back to the same thing, right? So, and then the holders, same thing. Like, you know, the more and more people holding more Bitcoins, right? Like, and it was supposed to be something distributed and evenly um, spread out. And then on top of that, now we have exchanges. There's like, you know, four major ones that control most of the cold storage coins that are kept there. And then you have to trust them to be there tomorrow if you're going to trade on it. It's crazy. <laughs> It's like actually crazy. But anyway, that, that your concept of universal money will contradict with the, the, the monetary policy of central banks mm. and the role of states, of governments. Right. Because you cannot unify it among the continents. I mean, we have, still have governments, we still have countries. Right. Well, I mean, if you create a layer in which anything can be containerized, you know, then it shouldn't be a problem. I mean, if you could, if you could have, find a system in which you can containerize existing assets and give a digital representation kind of like the you know with the files you can do on a computer you can verify md5 hash of anything that's on your computer right what if you could do something like that with digital money that's in your bank with gold with silver with erc20 tokens that are out there already with neo any tokens. kind of assets anything any kind right assets. you should be able to then seamlessly transport it along the same protocol without having to be part of that protocol and i think that kind of glue that needs to exist because that could create real DEX, that could create real marketplace, that could create um, real seamless transactions across the whole network for everybody. But, um, you know, there's, well, it means a lot to be said about how could that be achieved, but that's... That's what we are trying to do at the universe. Yeah. Okay, but uh, does it mean that the retail banks are not needed in this scheme? Because what, what their role would be? So, the future of money, in my opinion, for banks looks like for video rental stores. <laughs> the, <laughs> you know, sooner or later, people are not going to wait in line to get their money, right? Like, it's a stupid idea. Just like nobody wants to wait to rent a VHS long time ago, right? I think it's going the exact same way as Netflix. Like, it's always going to be streamed. It's all going to be online. Blockbuster. Accessible. That. Yeah, because people, that. nobody wants to wait anymore, like, for anything. <laughs> Especially, like, have you tried to send a wire lately? Anyone here? across like, you know, to another country, holy crap, like, <laughs> they will just kill you with questions and, you know, you basically wonder why they even ask you this question, like, where's this money for, who are you spending it to, like, what is it, who are these people on the other end, where'd you got this money, it's like, you've been keeping it for months in this account, and they're, you know, as soon as you try to pull it out, they just like bombard you with those retarded questions, <laughs> so, I don't know, I think that needs to end, because people, not the biggest thing actually, on the subject is a sanctions, sanctions countries and sanction list. If you want to look at, you know, the countries that are con continuously getting abused, they're all basically on sanction list. And I personally disagree with that whole concept. I think it's crazy, right, that people have that kind of power to just punish a country population by disconnecting them from money circulation. And then they literally suffer just because they try to prove a point to like five guys at the top. Like, it's insane to me. Like, you know, just go after those dudes. Like, go duke it out between each other. Like, why are you punishing the whole country? It's crazy. But they do it and they'll never stop. The only way they'll stop is if you basically, you know, you're never gonna change their system, but give them something that replaces it and then they can't control. And I think you can liberate continents like Africa, you know, Libya, Syria, all those places that just completely, Venezuela right now as well, they're just being sanctioned for no reason in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah.
So that's that, does it does it mean that blockchain from one hand can solve it because mm. it's decentralized, but from other hand, um, the, the same guy will try to, I mean, to block the whole blockchain. I yeah. don't know how it make it. I mean, I mean, you can try. You can try, but China hasn't succeeded fail. in it, yeah. and I'm sure they've tried. I mean, they're kind of really good at blocking things at this point. I mean, there's always going to be a way around. These packets are pretty small. There's lots of different protocols. You know, you should be able to get around. Uh, I've even seen ideas come out to use RF radio to transmit transactions over the internet, like dead zones, where there's no internet. So you basically so can. We just need to launch the satellites. I mean, our own satellites, blockchain satellites. Well, we could, but we could also work with companies that are already doing it, because a lot of them do have empty space that are not being used, and they'll gladly rent it out, rent it out for now. So we could start, you know, kind of. If we will transmit the signal yeah. not through the internet, but through the space, right, from one place to another. Yeah, shortwave radio. It will bounce so around. It, yeah, it cannot be stopped at all. Exactly, and there, and that's I like that. So one of the projects I heard recently was Sonocoin. They were trying to do that with audio waves being sent around. Um, anyway, I don't know if they took off with the, with the ICO or not, but the idea was actually really cool. And then the, I like the concept of sending containers of any crypto using RF radio. Because then you just have to get a right license to operate a radio, ham radio, whatever license, and then you can be a node on the network not using internet. That protects you from filtering, from being blacklisted, and all kinds of things, right? You still can be part of the economy. And the nice thing about it is when you're receiving it, nobody knows where you are physically, only their transmitter. So Actually. our own decentralized space blockchain, unifying <laughs> technological glue to any That's organization, just one of ideas. no banks, yeah. full freedom for everyone. Exactly. Yeah. That's the future <laughs> of fintech, guys. Awesome. That was like the weirdest panel, but awesome at the same time. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Thanks, guys. <laughs>